opportunity to send my dream to you all. So I am really valuing this opportunity. Thank you. So yeah. So Mahendra Singh Dhoni says he is a great captain because he trains. Shah Rukh Khan says, Saif Ali Khan says their life is large because they train. In fact, that's the only thing which that's the only thing which is keeping the Indian cricket team together. <laughs> <laughs> If, if alcohol is such a wonderful drug, wonderful substance, do we really want to stop this epidemic? Let it continue, right? So, most medical students nowadays, engineering students, law students, reputed, you know, people with a good background, don't mind drinking in party, right? So, is it good or bad? Let us first see that. And then we go to, do we really want to do something about it or not? So if I ask you, how does alcohol kill? Now that you have filled the questionnaire, probably some of you might be able to say a few things. But when I put this question to medical students in general, liver cirrhosis and vomiting of blood is the only thing which comes across. Now if alcohol is, I don't know if liver is okay. I am smart, I have a little liver. So I can drink is the kind of picture all of us have. But if we have a wholesome picture as to exactly what all does it do, then probably we will not touch it, right? So, the facts are, we know this, but somehow the perspective is not in our mind. The most common way in which alcohol kills is accidents. Then it is heart attacks and strokes. A huge person of heart attacks and strokes are because of alcohol. Like tobacco, alcohol also causes cancer. Cancers of the st throat, stomach and breast are extremely common because of alcohol. Liver cirrhosis of course comes forth. And then comes intentional injuries which means murders and suicides. Next. So to give it statistically 20 lakh 29,000 male deaths every year is caused by this addictive poison. It is not a recreational drug, it is an addictive poison which kills people. Next. So, next. This was just on tobacco reason I started. But I think I will take this. Um, so this is the slide where I started working on this topic. So similar to what I just said for tobacco also. All we know is cancers. But cancer is 10% of the tobacco related deaths in India. What are the other deaths? So, a study done by the American Cancer Society, a 20 year longitudinal study started with healthy people, smoking, non-smoking, followed up for 20 years. And they saw that out of those who died of cancers, 30% died because of smoking. Out of those who died of heart attacks, 22 because of smoking, strokes 27 and COPD 32 percent And after this study and the evidence which got collected, that is why smoking is bad in the developed countries now. They strictly banned it, if you have to smoke, you have to travel miles, because now it has been established that it's a highly lethal poison. Which somehow we don't know. At our places, people say, Ami, Vyasan Vyasan Karat, Nek Fakta Tambaku So that's the kind of attitude we have. It's a harmless poison. That's not true. And to prove that to the society, I have started to work on it. Anyways, so next. So then some people will say, Jab tak jiye ka, Jaldi mare ka. Jab tak jiye ka, Ayash ka jiye ka. Now, is that true? Please come. Is that true? No. Even next. Even when you are alive, alcohol impacts the quality of your life in multiple ways. So statistically, 7.6% of the global male that is lost are due to alcohol. Next. So to enumerate it, I mean, this is just from the top of the head to the bottom of your toe. You are med medical students, you will know quite a bit of it. I am not going to elaborate, but just to get a feel of it. Next. There are 210 disease <coughs> categories under ICD-10, which are directly or in, uh, partly contributed to by alcohol. Next. To name a few things, you know it, low birth rate, diabetes, immunity. Next. Alcohol-induced psychosis, which means what, those of you have seen the film Omkara, which means you have seen if a male tends to doubt his wife unnecessarily, though she is faithful. Husband ke parents usko bolling yare tere ko isse achhi nahi milne wali She is faithful but he is not convinced Now this is something which is extremely common among alcoholics And which ruins the family life forever Of 
first the other things you know next cirrhosis pancreatitis road traffic accidents drowning suicides violence murders nahi aap pehle now you will ask me kisi bande ne accident kar diya usme dharm ka fault kya hai kisi ne rape kar diya usme dharm ka fault kya hai dharm ka fault hai because its physiological property of alcohol to impair your eye motor coordination nation so you are seeing the person you know you have to take a left your brain sends a signal but some of your hand doesn't turn and therefore it is attributable to alcohol similarly impaired social judgment the sense of right and wrong to impair it is a property of alcohol if you want to propose a god it said thoda laga baat kar do so then you don't think about what's going to happen but then this is going to be applicable even for valid things there are complete number of husbands who don't assault their wives on the day they are not drunk and who assault their wives on the day they are drunk <coughs> now is this because the husband has some properties yes but then there is a huge contributing factor of alcohol also if it is happening only on the days when he is drunk because on those days his brain's capacity to think right and wrong is gone right so in the delhi gang rape case four people take a rod show in the vagina he is doing that and immediately after that one hour after that one person says oh shit maine kya kar diya hang me the other person commits suicide in the jail when the intoxication is gone so is it possible that the ferociousness of the crime was because of the intoxicated state maybe that is why these crimes are attributable to alcohol next so yeah we are talking of quality of life first point is it causes multiple distressing diseases when you have acidity vomiting of blood when there is stinging or burning in your leg it's not a good quality of life second point importance out of the organic causes of impotence alcohol tobacco diabetes and high blood pressure are the four most common causes is impotence painful not physically emotionally devastating right and for alcohol is an aphrodisiac which means it increases your self desire to have sex double fatka ichha bahut hoti hai aur kar kuch bhi nahi pata okay next it decreases your stamina for physical effort of course for obvious things you drink 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 your heart is spoiled hands legs everything is spoiled your stamina is decreased but obviously and then because of that you can't work enough and you are next so it's a financial disaster also to give a quick example when i i i was in pune i had gone to stitch my pants with some tailor <coughs> and when i was there i gave it and i came back and after a week i went to collect it and his shop was closed i went again after a few days closed three four times closed i asked the next next shop okay what happened so he says have you given your money seriously yeah, forget it now you'll get it back So he said that this guy was supposed to be the most famous tailor in Mangalwar Pet where I was recently. And then because of his success, friends came, drinking started. They used to celebrate. Now a stage has come that everything is gone, and he sits in the shop only when he doesn't have money. As soon as he gets money, he goes and drinks. And of course, he cannot work anymore, so he doesn't do anything. From the best tailor in Mangalwar Pet to the worst, the journey is because of alcohol. This is the typical thing you all know. They incur debts and all that. So typically they have everything and they are become paupers. They are in debts and finally when the debt is unsolvable, they will burn themselves up and commit suicide. Or their wife will burn herself up and commit suicide. And therefore the suicides are attributable to alcohol. Next. Yes. So. financial disaster and then occupational impairment and absenteeism different studies would show you that 15 to 20% of work absenteeism 40% of accidents at work are attributed to alcohol the new year is celebrated on 31st january sorry 31st december but holidays on 1st of jan because the whole of west is not in position to go on 1st of jan <laughs> next it decreases your attractiveness the media repeatedly tries and projects If you drink, if you smoke, you look smart. You get girls. Okay, will be there. He was two thousand, maybe five thousand. Such a man. Repeatedly trying to create the image that alcohol is gonna make you attractive. Bullshit. If your mom 
those things. If you don't know where you're walking, <laughs> you look attractive. By what? By what stretch of imagination? I would request boys to ask girls in your class, does any of them find a guy intoxicated attractive? No, they're fooling you. Just to make you drink and sell the product. Yes. So, Mardangi Bharti hai. Mardangi ke jitne bhi parameters hai. Your sexual performance, your physical stamina, your ability to earn, your attractiveness. Har ek ko kuch hota hai to kam hota hai. Bharti definitely nahi. Right? Yes. So now, so we are here looking at quality of life. We saw four ways in which it impairs your masculinity. This is a picture here. No, okay. So it impairs the quality, uh, it impairs your masculinity and that causes multiple diseases which are going to impair your quality. It makes you a slave. Why do they call it an addiction? The first time you drink alcohol, you will feel, ah, kya cheez hota hai kora hai, dude. But, at the end of it, you are not going to come back to normal. You are going to be below normal. You are going to feel restless, you are going to feel irritable, you won't be able to focus on your work and you will be like, you take the second time, you will get the cake, but less than the first one. And at the end of it, you feel still worse. And the cycle keeps on going on, till the day comes in your life, when as soon as you get up, you need your eye opener drink, just to get started. Right? Just as you know, you must be knowing these people around you. Till they don't take their morning cigarette or tobacco, what they can't do? Sundas ki ninja baate ho, but sabate ho. You can't even pass their stools without this thing going in their stomach. That's how addicted they become. Now, being medical students, you know, this withdrawal, tolerance, these are physiological properties. This is not that if your willpower comes in, so you will become dependent, and if your willpower is good, then you won't become dependent. Right? It's not about your willpower. It's an addictive substance and the cycle might be slow for some, fast for some. But this is what the cycle is going to be. So one of my professors used to say, Daru mandar jayega, to kutta bahar aayega. It's a property of the substance. It's not about how good or bad you are. The substance is bad enough. So let, let me clarify two things. So of course I am here because I feel it's a disaster to touch this thing and therefore I am here. However, I respect your opinions. I just request you to listen with an open mind to what I have seen as a psychiatrist and then make your choice and I respect that. But just listen with an open mind to what I have to say and I regard the substance to be bad, not the person to be bad. I, I, I understand that he's trapped. So I don't have anything against anyone who chooses to drink. So please don't take any of the things I say personally. Okay? It's just that I'm trying to put... I don't want to dilute the reality by saying something which is less than real. So yes, so this goes on like that in a stage. So you are here, here. So person doesn't take it voluntarily. But as soon as in the morning, if his hands is trembling, he's not able to work, he doesn't get sleep. He's bound to drink now. He's bound to get the craving. So you get trapped for life. And therefore it's a disease. We are, we are, we are asked to be sympathetic towards him because he's not the problem. He has been trapped, etc. So quitting is very difficult. What is in your hand? What is in our hand? Alcohol is regarded to be a chronically relapsing disease, alcohol dependence. Because the person will stop after some time again he will stop, again he will stop, again he will stop. Of course, there are few people who are able to stop for life, but majority are not. So if quitting is so difficult and not in our hand, what is in our hand? <coughs> the first drink is in our hand. Or for those of you who drink socially, and out of the opinion that currently you are in control, then the situation currently is in your hand to stop it today. Fine, it might be true. Today it is social drinking and it is in control. <coughs> so before it goes out of control, stop today. Because once that happens, you won't be able to stop even if you want. So there is a very typical thing which works. If the husband will come in the night, he will assault the wife. Next day morning he will be like, <laughs> Night time comes, the craving starts, 
He will snatch the money, go drink, come back, hit her. Next is money. Is he acting? No. He genuinely means that. He is trapped. Don't let that happen to you. Stop it. Before you get trapped. So it impairs your mental health and academic performance for obvious thing. If you are going to, when you smoke, you are going to get a high for one hour. You are going to get intoxicated for one hour. But the rest of the day, you are going to be in some threshold of full blown withdrawal. So the prevalence of anxiety and depression increases in those who are drinking and smoking. And of course they have a guilt because all of them want to stop but can't. So they have a guilt. And so that's what makes them anxious different. Next is a gateway drug. Quickly I'll say. So in surgery, OPD, we had, not OPD, in the ward, when I was an intern, I saw a particular child, aged 14, and he was admitted for rupture, spleen, kidney, and something else. Because uh, he was a brown sugar addict, he used to require daily 400 rupees. Of course, he was a poor guy, he didn't have it, he used to steal daily. One day, police was after him, running, 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 from the third floor he jumped, and he had come with rupture of it. Age of 14, how did he become a brown sugar addict? Starts with gutka, goes to cigarettes, goes to ganja, goes to alcohol, and then somewhere will get it. But just these things, what will happen? Try the real stuff, and it goes to this, and it goes to that. So these are the gateway drugs, which open up a whole new world of criminality, addictive substances, and unhealthy things in your life. Right? If you don't do this too, or if you make sure that your family members don't do this too, your cousins don't do this too, you can rest safe that no other drug is going to test it. Legal complications for what they, whatever they do in the intoxicated states are so common, we all know that. Social respect. One of the addicts who wanted to quit, so I asked him why do you want to quit. He said, I want that back. Next. 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 So that is something huge you lose when you become an addict. Next. So it harms your family too, because of as ma'am said, domestic violence is an extremely common cause. This someone in hatred. So, imagine what would happen if a child has seen his father assault his mother or his childhood. A very, tally, a very typical thing is when they come in 9th standard, 10th standard, they want, hey, aage saath laga, for there. That's the time when the assaultiveness stops, but the verbal abuse continues. But the relation between the father and the son, do you think they can ever normalize after this? So in one of the reaction centers I was, I was just fresh, so there was a particular person who was there since two months. And so he was abstinent in the center since two months, he was sober and this that, so he talked to me, my family doesn't come to see me, take me this that, so I gave a call to them, yeah, you are good, I will convince them, I is a disease and all that, it's not your fault, so I took a him. So he called the family's home, and the female says, doctor, are you new? We have paid the fees. If it gets over, call us, we'll come and pay. Don't disturb us. But This is the point of frustration family members reach. Initially, all of them are supportive. No, my father is so good here, he's not bad, this alcohol is bad. But when he keeps on doing again and again and again, people are not God. They lose faith, they lose patience. So it's a very unhealthy family atmosphere that results in such homes. Children develop anxiety and depression disorders for obvious reasons when they see so much drama in their home daily. Quickly, in school mental health program, I had particularly met a child. She was a girl in, I think, fourth standard. So she, the teacher complained she remains sad and doesn't focus on studying. So I talked to her. She was like, Mom, no answer. Second time, Mom, no answer. Third time, she tells me, My father drinks and he assaults the mother. So I'm worried about that. So when I think, Shanko Kyoga keeps worrying me and I'm not able to focus. I asked her, I met you the third time. Why did you tell me? You could have done something. So she said, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. Imagine a fourth standard child dealing with so much alone. That's what happens to all these children. They're fighting so much things and without any support. And they end up with anxiety and depressive disorders for life. So you ask a kid what do you want to become? And
And you might say, doctor, engineer, and one of the things you will say is, Papa is having And when the Papa is okay to drink and smoke in parties, a fool like me goes to his school and says, Guriba, Guriba. He says, Hoki, Guriba, but Uthni, Guri, Nayo, Sakti. Right? So the probability that he will start experimenting with it when his friends encourage him is high. The fetus gets harmed, we all know that the birth weight decreases by 1500 grams on an average grams, right? And so she's going to be backwardness for obvious reasons. Right? So, what is the conclusion? The point is that alcohol, a person who takes alcohol does not want, want his family to get harmed, but still the family gets harmed in multiple ways. So, what is the conclusion? So, for those of you who have not chosen your boyfriends till now, choose me. Or in the league college, one girl said, You are talking as if only boys drink, sir. You don't know anything. So I will say, Either way, whether you are a girl or a boy, choose your partner with care. Because today he might be a, or he or she might be a so, social drinker once in a month. But 10 years down the line, what it will be, he can't guarantee, you can't guarantee, I can't guarantee. Don't invite a slippery slope in your life. Is the advice I give. So does it decrease your stress? It is a bad thing, why do you keep it? Is it good or not? Of course yes. Of course yes, it decreases your stress. The issue is, at what cost? At cost of all the things that we just discussed. Is it worth it? Is there no other way to decrease your stress? Friends, going on a trip, playing, indoor games, outdoor games, eating something you love, drinking something other than alcohol. <laughs> Meditate, admission, dance, music, creative arts. Thousands of wonderful ways, constructive ways to become happy and to recreate. And when you use these ways to become happy, you are going to be happy today, tomorrow, forever and you are going to be empowered in life because of the qualities you will possess. While when you use this way to become happy, you will be happy for an hour and <laughs> But you are going to suffer the pain of it for life. <coughs> when your leg will get amputated because of peripheral vascular disease, when a father dies at 35 of heart attack, when you have ascites and you walk like a pregnant mother, Consequences are for life. Right? So, when I finished my internship, the CMO who signed my internship completion certificate, by the time I finished my psychiatry residency, he was roaming in the medicine walls there, not the walls, department the there, begging for money to his professor friends. And professors used to tell the people, go, oh, I got a to bar with me. Something which he had used to recreate all his life, to date, had taken away his job, respect, money, everything. Then is this a smart way of recreation? It's a recreate, temporary recreation which is going to permanently have the potential to do in your life. Yes? So, relief is only temporary, long run is going to be a huge deal and therefore I will say definitely be happy. I am not against your happiness. But be happy in a constructive way. Yes? So, you all know what an ostrich is, what is the characteristic of an ostrich, what, what is it? When the lion comes, what does it do? It digs a hole in the sand and buries it in. So it digs, buries it in, then he can't see the lion. So he says, ah, baj gaya, baj gaya. The lion comes, eats him up and goes away. This is exactly what an alcoholic does. So knock him off, tension, ah, ah. Tension is right in front of his eyes. Kill your brain's capacity to think and then believe there is no tension. So the loan of 20,000 will become 1 lakh, become 5 lakhs, it will become 10 lakhs. And then it will kill you. Because when you don't have any solution, you commit suicide. Is this the way you want to deal with your stress? It's not a symbol of your smartness. Right? It's a certificate of your stupidity that you don't have healthy coping skills in life. Am I right? Only those who don't have healthy coping skills have to use this kind of things to deal with their stress. 
So get on the right track and become happy today and forever. So you might have heard for the first time the huh? alcohol epidemic. क्या कुछ भी पता रहे खुद का ही गाना क्यों चला epidemic ना Look at the stats. In the last 20 years, no, okay. So the sales are increasing by six to eight percent every year. There is a constant increase in the number of young people who drink and the frequency and context in the consumption. A study in Kerala says the percentage of drinking population under 21 years has increased from 2 percent to 14 percent in the last 20 years, and the average age of initiation has decreased from 19 to 30. I have been a part of a study in virtually 10 standard students, 35 percent boys as well as 35 percent girls consume tobacco in some form or the other. Is this not an epidemic? And girls are also catching up. So it's across genders, across, initially it was then it became jo high three men. And now it is across all sections, right? Next. So that's why it's an epidemic. Vijay Malaya says in India, cricket is like a religion, you then have a young demographic, blah 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 blah, market it to them and we will have it. Is he succeeding? Definitely yes. And unless we do something, things are gonna get irreversibly bad. Next. So, when I read these lines, this is why I started this work. Today, there is irrefutable scientific evidence about the hazardous consequences of alcohol and tobacco. And yet, there are no signs of their use decreasing in the near future. I'm oh, shocked. And after all that I have seen as a psychiatrist, the pain, the misery. Oh, shit. Why? And then I started thinking and I agree with my, one of my professors that we are not doing enough on prevention. For a large scale change in any disease, prevention is the way out. For example, infectious diseases are controlled in the West. Why? Antibiotics, hygiene, vaccines, etc. Right? And especially for an addictive substance whose quit rates are very poor, prevention becomes all the more important. However, we are not doing anything about it, or very less. So how about working on prevention? So that I accepted. And I also saw there's a lot of facts, a lot of misconceptions, even among the medical community. Forget the rest. So, if collectively we work and share these facts and remove misconceptions, won't things change? We have to change. Has any one of you ever thought, Ek baat to red poison chakke de <laughs> Because you're very clear. <coughs> this thing is bad. But when I was in DJ, a second year MBBS student, girl came in and told me after the lecture, okay, sir, in my group in hostel, there is a dream. Ek part to taki ka pike knock out kate dekhna hai kaisa. And that's because, when you are to Vijay Malaya ki girlfriend ka nukya, ke uske son ki girlfriend ka na, Devi ka budu. So, uske har film mein, ek song to mangta hai jis mein she is not. Abhi ye dek dek ke, why shouldn't the youth have a temptation to try what it is? When it is glorified everywhere. And bura hai asa koi nahi bura. I'll be surprised if some youth doesn't try. Right? But if we give them the right perspective and make it clear to them that this is not a road to heaven, this is a road to hell, why would they try it? No one is a fool to hit the X on the leg, right? So that's what I believe and that is why I am doing this work. And I wanted to share with you these facts and statistics. Lecture is not over. Don't sigh and press of video. So, so this is why I am working. So prevention, yes, next. Prevention is the way out. So quit rates are poor, large scale is only to that, therefore prevention, next. So what is the evidence? So the evidence says, uh, meta-analysis say, the three things which work the most in prevention are Raising taxes, making it more expensive, strong drug driving countermeasures, punishing those who drink and drive, and restrictions on availability. To give an example, so homicide, mur murder rate was very high in Brazil, city of Diadema. So they responded by imposing a strict licensing law in 2002 
that after 11 pm, strictly it should not be sold. Within two years, murder rate, murder rate decreased by 44%. And there are many such studies. Okay? Now, all the three are what I just said drug driving, restrictions, and taxes. All are legal measures. So, eventually, for an addictive substance, legal root has to come in. However, for that to come in, sufficient political and social will have to be there. If 50% of the Pandus are addicted to tobacco, a tobacco ban cannot get implemented. Right? So sufficient social and political will has to be created first. And that is where doctors and teachers, our role comes first. First we have to make it clear to the society what this addictive poison is. Harrison describes it as a form of chronic suicide. But do people understand it that way? But if we make people understand it that way, then probably the social and political will, will get paid. Next. So, next. So, in so advocacy, in education, what should we do? Now, there are two schools of thought, even among doctors. One is, be not be responsible. And second is, it's a bad thing, addictive thing, don't touch. Now, I believe in the second one. So, the arguments for that are, if drinking responsibly and in control was in your hand, why call it an addictive substance? Do you think any addict voluntarily ruins his family? He gets a joy in squandering his money and destroying his professional life. Drinking responsibly and in control is not a matter of choice. It just happens to you. So how can you tell Pina to be control baby? It doesn't make sense to me. Quit rates are poor, therefore it's better to not start. It can happen to anyone. My secretary coach here, I told him why do you drink? So he said, there is genetic disease, there is no disease in my house. Now the genetic predisposition, her decision made all the other. So that becomes an excuse. So if you have a family history of diabetes, is your risk for getting diabetes more? Yes. Does that make it a genetic disease? No. It remains a lifestyle disease. So just because if you have a family history of alcohol, your risk is more. That doesn't mean if you don't have a history, you won't get it. The single most important reason of getting addicted is you touched an addictive poison. That's the most important thing. Everything else is secondary. There is no gene de detected. If you have this gene, then you get it. If you don't have, you don't get it. Sorry, nothing like that. Okay? So there will be some people who will be more disposed, some will be less. But no one can claim they are not at risk. It can happen to anyone. There are enough number of doctors who have ruined their life because of alcohol. The, one of the founders of Alcoholic Anonymous was a surgeon. This practice was ruined since many years. So it can happen to anyone. Now there is a evidence. So there are doctors who even give lectures. That alcohol in moderation is good for the heart. There are hospitals which have put up on their board. Think in this. And it also sounds good to the person. Na? Acha doctor hai. Pide ko bhi bolta hai. Haan, okay, good. I have had patients who are addicts now. But who started not to enjoy but because the great doctor gave advice, improve your digestion by starting to drink it, not eat. But control it. Anyway. <laughs> this is what happened. So the fact is, okay, yes. <coughs> the evidence of such studies is very weak. They have many methodological flaws in them. You can imagine the financial power of tobacco and alcohol companies. How much does it take to sponsor a study which is going to create such things? And typically, if you want to prove alcohol in moderation is good or not, what should you compare? You should compare someone who has never drunk with those who drink in control. What if you compare those who have stopped drinking in order to, you know, wo bias ke liye na, na, jo log ne pehle kiya tha, abhi stop kiya hai, aur abhi continue kar rahe, unko leke. Does that make sense? Who will stop? A party drinker stops, convince kar ke thak jao, he is not gonna stop. Only when he has ruined his life royally, then he will be forced to stop. You compare these people with those who drink in control and then say, it fares better. Does it make sense? So, meta-analysis means analysis of many studies on a topic taken together. So, meta-analysis have shown that many studies which claim such things have methodological flaws and if you remove them and then analyze the remaining, then this, this claim doesn't hold true. Second, 
the WHO says even if you accept it, चलो कि ये true है, चलो कि in so and so pattern it is helpful for the heart. So in this controlled pattern, how many people drink? So based on that, every year hypothetically 88,000 male deaths can be said to be prevented because of alcohol. However, actually 4,66,000 cardiac deaths occur every year in males because of alcohol. And this is only cardiac. Total number of male deaths because of alcohol is 20,38,000. So the evidence it helps is query, but the evidence it destroys is conclusive. Next, a, re a recent study done in India in 10 centers across the country including AIMS in 2010 shows that at least in the Indian population even light alcohol consumption increased the risk by 1.3 times of, of a heart attack by 1.3 times moderate by 1.6 times heavy by 2 so at least in the Indian population you cannot say that alcohol in moderation is good for the uh, Inter-heart study which was done in 52 countries that also showed that in the Indian subpopulation light alcohol consumption did not decrease the risk of heart attack, it increased the risk. So for us there is no doubt at all, it does increase the risk of heart attack. Next, next. The American Heart Association issues a warning, drinking alcohol increases dangers such as blah 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 and it is not possible to predict in which people alcoholism will become a problem. And so, given this risks and other thing, we advocate people not to start drinking if they do not already drink. And in spite of this, some doctors continue to advocate. It's a misconception. Please change that. Next. So some people say, my one of my direction professor used to say, of course he used to drink. He used to tell me, or us, if we are not moral people. It is none of our business whether they want to drink or not. Once they get addicted and they come to you, then you can tell what to do. But if he chooses to drink, it's a lifestyle choice. Something which is killing 20 lakh people every year is not a medical issue. Now it might be a moral issue also, fine, but does that take the medical issue? How many of us say salt? How many of us say salt? say tobacco is bad, alcohol is bad. The evidence is much stronger. But somehow we don't do that. We feel we will be labeled as religious and moralistic. It's a medical issue. And we need to talk about it. And no one is talking about it and that is why it is spreading. I believe it's not just a moral issue. And at the end of the day there are no advantages. Even the recreation as we just saw, it's just temporary. In the long run it's going to harm. So it has no advantages. So see, you leave the final decision to them. But as a doctor, at least advocate the right thing, at least guide the right thing, then leave the decision. Guide it not to the right decision. So yes, next. So is it okay to drink in parties? I just want to summarize a few of the things I said. So no one is a born addict. Will everyone who touches alcohol become dependent? No. No. Agree. 85% will not become dependent. But 15% is a huge number and it can be anyone. Okay. One. Second, accidents. One of my, one of my psychiatry chairs after a party came and told me next day morning, Achha ho yaar, kal accident nahi hua. Kaan jari thi, meirko samal nahi raha. Now this is a psychiatry chair. Now imagine how many people like this are on the roads every day. Accidents are not done by addicts. They have their very fixed pattern. Either pine ka, is gali mein aise se karne ka, us gutter mein jake, so ne ka. They don't harm anyone. It is the binge drinkers who harm. So now I'm telling you, pandra prasen chhod do, baki ki jo 85 hai na, us mein se jo binge karte hai, they are the ones who do accidents. Binge drinking is also harmful to the heart. Behavioral problems, tum jo behavior mein gadbar karoge, go. One medical student, in a particular college in Bombay, two years back, binged. Next day morning in the night, SP rated the vomitus, died in three days in the ICU. One day of party, ruin your life. While in Pune, I used to go to eat at a particular auntie's place. So her husband was a good guy. He, she was happy with him, but he used to drink in parties. So one day after the party, he didn't have a sense, accident, I, I see you for ten days, 
because he had drunk in the insurance company didn't pay the claim she had to pay 10 lakhs finally he died so now she has given one room on rent taking guest wages and she cooks at home and runs a mess where we used to go to eat one day of party it changes your life if your leg gets cut or you cut someone's leg or if you kill someone one day of party it's going to change your life or someone's life and therefore I will recommend not even party drinking makes sense to me next so this is my concluding argument as to in prevention what can we do so if I ask you a question which country is harmed more by alcohol India or USA what will you say sorry I don't hear India. India right but why we are rational people so I know why Hmm. Why is India harm more? So we are more people, so we are harm more. Not that way. <laughs> Proportion wise, we, I am asking, why more? Please. So some people say the quality of alcohol is not good here. Right? So when you drink up uh, good quality, uh, bad quality poison, you get harm. And when you drink a good quality poison, what happens? <laughs> so, this is the rich blend of the finest handy grains of France. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> filtered cigarettes are as harmful as non filtered cigarettes. Decreasing by the harm by 5% doesn't make any difference. Methyl alcohol kills how many people in a year? 100? 200? 1000? Methyl alcohol kills. 20 lakh only males, females are different. It's methyl alcohol which kills, not methyl alcohol. Right? So that's not the answer. It's not the quality of alcohol. Anything else? Sorry? Some, huh? I didn't hear. No, the It means which period you So in USA, people drink alcohol, right? It's common over there, right? So what do you mean by no period? Right. So when a person is educated and aware, it makes a difference. So when a well-educated MBBS or a psychiatrist drinks, he won't get <laughs> okay. So that's another misconception. It's a very, those people, you, you, you need to go to school to realize alcohol is bad. People in Charles have grown up seeing it real life education. You don't need education for that, right? So that's also not the reason. Any other reason? Some people say, that's okay, I'll answer. This shows how skewed our understanding of alcohol is. It is USA which is harmed more. But our understanding of alcohol is so skewed that we keep believing that the problem is not with the substance. The problem is with people. So USA ke maan log bhi hai ke unko thodi kuch hoga. Woh smart hai, control mein bhi hai. Hamari yaar ke toh hai, ah, ek lead rent ho. Woh log bhi hai. This is the skewed understanding we have. Not true. The impact is more here, yes. For example, here a husband will kill his wife who will kill his wife who will kill his wife who will kill his wife. Foreign girl will kill his wife. So she won't suffer for life. Rich family, the financial impact will be less. Treatment of possibility is more. So that's the same. But if you talk of the proportion of families harmed by alcohol, that is more in the USA. So, 4% of deaths in India are attributable to alcohol, 9% of deaths in USA are attributable to alcohol. If you talk of dependence and abuse, 4.3% here, 8.2% there. For the simple reason that it's a poison and it's an addictive substance and acts irrespective of your education. So, India may, where this 2004 ka statistic is, if 30% of people experiment and that 30% is dependent, then it's 4%. जबकि एक कंट्री में 60 परसेंट लोग ट्राई करेंगे और उसमें 15 परसेंट भी डिपेंडेंट होते हैं तो इट कम्स तू 9 परसेंट राइट एंड दिस इज 2004 आई एम शर्ट बाय नाउ वी आर नॉट एट 4 दे वुड हैव रेस्ट इन द नेक्स्ट 10 15 इयर्स द वे थिंग्स आर गोइंग इफ यू डोंट चेंज वी कैन एस्यूम दो so now the question, in spite of a better socio-economic strata, education, everything, why is that country harmed more and why are they being protected? 
because alcohol was socially acceptable then and it was socially unacceptable here. And therefore we were protected. Buri ji jit, haat nahi gala leka, khatam bhaat, baj gaya. Next, across the world, the problem is much less among women compared to males. Why? Is it females have higher will power, are smarter and all that? Maybe, but that's not the reason for this. <laughs> Men will be men. Bai yoke is to bring a tithi. So women can't drink, so they are protected. Males can drink, so they are harmed. As simple as that. So, what I want to conclude is, if we bring back that social unacceptability, which these companies and film stars and cricketers are so aggressively trying to break, then, again we will get our cultural protection back. And being medical doctors, we have a huge say. We command respect. Whether we are smart or not, people think they are smart. And we know what we are saying. Right? You go and talk to anyone about alcohol and what they will say, doctors will be there. Have you heard that? So people decide right or wrong based on what we do and say. We can change the social acceptance again. If I tweet alone, will it change? But if 60 people sitting here, every day 10 people, will it change? We have to say that 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 we have to say So what I am suggesting you is, see anyways why you take a case, you are asking about alcohol and tobacco. I am asking you one minute, one minute with each patient. So you ask about it, if he says I have not taken it, wow, good decision, never take it. Just say one or two steps. And say this is a very bad thing, don't do it. If he says I am taking it away, say it's your choice. But as a doctor, this is what I have seen. Say one or two steps and say, according to me, the best thing you can do for you and your family's insurance is quit this addictive poison today. One minute. Do you think if we do this, 10 patients a day, people coming from different villages, do you think things will change? I think they will. Okay? That can be the first step. Many other steps can happen. But luckily, we are not a community which can just say, Hum kya hai? There is a lot of power we have. When I joined psychiatry, we had a party, Pune Psychiatry Association. So, one of the most popular psychiatrists of Pune comes to us and says, Oh, young man, you are not drinking, you are you're adults now, you can drink. So then when one of us, was giving party to his friends and the friends were forcing him to pee, 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 like that. Kitna bada doctor bolta hai, pee sante hai, kitna bada. Kitna bada. He started. And after that, Puna Secretary Society ke har party mein he binges. And next day, ek bachit ka kaam mein nahi hai. Aata tha. This is what happens when we, with our authority, take a look. Let us use the authority which society has invested us in a healthy direction, let us advocate about it, right? In other ways, no, it's not only as doctors, you know, otherwise also all of us you are smart, clean, all that, right? So if girls in this class start saying, gee, you know, promote drinks. <laughs> Do you think any guy in this class will dare to drink? But you're not using the power you have. <laughs> Let's start speaking up, is what I am saying. Let's start speaking up. We are not asking you to force, but request. The most common reason people quit is not this statistics. Girlfriend will say, I don't like this. Okay, quit. <laughs> Can't you take a stand for them like their parents take for them?